Hello, uh, this is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be starting a class on doctoral dissertation. I'm hoping that uh, this will be recorded and spread so that um, you will be able to think about doing your doctoral dissertation. And not only think about it, but actually do it. It's not that difficult once you get over the hoops, which I have. And I think that I've got some answers for you. So this session is going to be about that. I'm going to be recording, as I said. So stay tuned in two seconds to go. So here. Okay, set on. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Just let me make sure that the internet is properly in. Oops, it's not. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to go. So how are you today? Uh, let me know in the chat box by saying anything, like uh, how you are, smiley, or use other uh, means, and where you're from, the time. I presume it's not late at night for anyone, unless you're uh, still sleeping, okay, which is... Uh, Maybe the case in the Americas, if you're in Central or Pacific time. So welcome, welcome everyone. It's early in the morning here in Toronto. It's uh, just a little bit past uh, eight. It's a nice warm day. <laughs> it's been really, really hot. So um, it's not that comfortable unless you have air conditioning, which I do. All right, so let's just get started. What brings you here? And feel free to uh, use the set, the chat box. And I see we've got Sadie from, wow, 7 o'clock in the morning in Texas. So I guess that's central for you. Yes, it's, uh, it's early, but you know, some people get up really early in the morning. Um, I try to get up around 6. It doesn't always happen, but there are a lot of advantages. I know people who start their writing at around 5 o'clock, which is something you may want to consider for your uh, dissertation. Working at a regular time in the morning. Many find that useful. I didn't. I worked on mine really late at night. The later, the better. So I, I'm a night owl, I guess. Okay, so we see we've got people from Romania, Texas, anywhere else that I missed? Mohammed and um, Israel. Say, do we know Marcus? And S. Vine. The names look familiar, but uh, if you add the place, I'll connect better. Okay, so as I said, feel free to use the chat box as we go. People will be joining us. Hello, Iman. Now, people join for different reasons, which is fine. Okay, Nancy. Uh, curiosity is the best reason, I suppose. And uh, I think it's a, a good one because people who are curious will be good at learning. Okay, curiosity and wonder are wonderful things. All right, the doctoral dissertation is a course that I'll be giving. And I just want to say that doing your doctorate is not that difficult. I mean, taking courses is quite easy, of course. But even doing your doctoral dissertation does not have to be difficult. Okay, it's really about the attitude and having a template, which I will share with you. Okay, the template is divided into five chapters. And if you follow these, it should be quite easy. The course is 12 weeks. And you might think, well, that's pretty short. But if you stick to it, you can do it. You know, some people do their doctoral dissertation in 10 years. Okay, and uh, 
that's very difficult, okay? Because there's always the fear that you'll become A, B, D. Does anyone know what A, B, D is? I hope you don't, and I hope you never know. <laughs> but just, uh, it's something that we're all afraid of, at least I was before I completed my doctoral dissertation. You don't know what it is. A, B, D. You know, you could have something called, I've never heard it, but A, B, T. All right, so I will keep you all but dissertation. All but dissertation means that you've done all your coursework, but you haven't done your dissertation. So all but dissertation is somewhere we don't want to go. We all want to finish um, in order to get our degree. And you can't get your PhD or ED, uh, your doctor of education or doctor of psychology or any other, um, you know, higher than MA degree unless you write a dissertation. Okay, some call it a thesis. Generally, it's called a doctoral dissertation. So let me just get a little bit of information before we start about the course. How many of you are students in a doctoral program? Okay, if you can add that so I get an idea. So are you a student in a doctoral program? Thank you, man. I know that you're doing your, <laughs> your master's, but it's wonderful that you're here and you want to learn about doing your doctoral program and going on. So I think that's great. And uh, that's how we should all be. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so Kata, you're not either. Sorry, I'm an English teacher first. <laughs> so if you want to make a, two negatives, we use either instead of two at the end or at the beginning neither am I okay just uh... so very good kata so it's good to make mistakes because you get an opportunity to uh, be corrected and I think that's important yes it is thank you for thanking me <laughs> I appreciate that I don't correct people unless I think they want to be corrected but in this program, you will be corrected because the idea is to uh, have your doctoral dissertation accepted, approved. Okay, that's the idea. Not only to write, but to get the proposal approved. Okay, so anyone doing their uh, doc program? Anyone in a program right now? How many of you have your mics, just so I get an idea if I can pass it on to you? How many have a mic and have tested it to make sure that it's working? I hate to be the only one speaking. So if you'd like to ask questions and your mic is working, okay, I see S. Vine. Sheila, is that you? Um, Vine looks familiar, but then maybe I know a few Vines. Oh, it is Sheila. <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, okay, let me pass the mic on to you. I hope that you're decent. I don't see, I, I only see your head. Uh, de decent as in can I share? Yeah, the, <laughs> the, camera, the, the camera's not at a very good angle, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, normally it's a different computer and a different camera, but this one's not working very well at the moment. Hi. <laughs> But, you know, but I like visuals, so I think that's fine. All right, so Sheila, tell, tell us, um, are you in a program? A doctoral program? No, and no, I'm not in a program. Are you interested in joining no. one? You're not. So what brings you here? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, confused. Um, yeah, I'm interested, but um, I'm... Um, I have a lot of work at the moment, so I don't know. I'm interested in getting a doctorate. That's what I would like to do. But how to do it is, um, is very difficult for me because uh, I'm in Germany, and so it's um, always the language problem. And uh, 
that on top of everything else, yeah? Yeah, I totally okay. understand. Yes, I'm going to take away the... Uh, okay, there's... Uh, I totally understand. Um, Beth, you can still do your doctorate in English through uh, online means. Have you considered that? And I'm going to ask everyone uh, who's not in a program, have you considered doing your PhD or doctorate uh, online? Okay, I did mine in a blended form through the University of Phoenix. And they're very good because, uh, first of all, you get a discount if you are out of the United States, which I am because I'm in Canada. So um, I'm considered international. So I got a, I think it's 20% or 10% discount. So it comes out really good. Um, they force you at the University of Phoenix, and I don't get any, I don't get money for saying this, but they force you to finish. They do everything possible to make sure that you finish within four years. That means your uh, courses and the whole thing. Okay, so if I started in 2006, I finished in 2010. And you can also do it in three years if you're fast. Okay, you can do it in three years. That's great. Now, the question is this. I'm glad, Iman. The question is this. Would you be interested in doing it in the United States? And I'll tell you why. Because in the UK, they also have online programs in the UK and in the UK you don't need to take courses unless you want to see in the United States you are forced to take courses and I think you're not in Germany either I'm not sure about Germany uh, she it's not expensive you'd be surprised you know you um, you pay per course and it turns out to be quite reasonable um, I did it, and I was working full-time. And full-time teaching online and face-to-face -face is if online, you know how much I am online, most of you, but face-to-face, -face, I had 24 hours of teaching, teaching hours a week. And online, I think I had about 20, so I was working like maybe um, 90 hours a week, and I had time for writing as well. So it's all possible. Which university in the UK? I don't know. These universities started coming up when I finished. But I think they have one in Leeds and Manchester. If you look for online uh, PhD programs, you'll find them. And then you can do it in English. And you don't need to take courses, as far as I know. It's just the um, writing, writing your doctoral dissertation. And you may have to take courses in order to understand more about the research process and take courses that will uh, advance you in the UK. And I think it's in Europe in general. So online, PhD, the Open University is about, wow, that's, um, that's about, let's say, that's twenty twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Would that be it? Is that what the pound is? I'm not sure. $20,000 for a whole program is not bad at all. It would be cheaper than the University of Phoenix. I think I paid about 32, between 32 and $36,000 for four years. Okay, but that's four years. Okay, so if that's like $10,000 or I think $8,000 a year. So I think the UK would be a lot cheaper in that case. Uh, of course, it depends on how they want it. I know in Australia, you can also have, uh, you have online programs in Australia. Australia, I think they want the money up front. And I can't afford that, or I couldn't in those days. I still can't. Uh, but in the UK, I'm not sure whether Open University wants it up front. But I presume Open University is probably the cheapest. They want it up front. And everything's accredited, MN. It's accredited. Uh, all these universities are accredited universities, so that shouldn't be a problem. University of Phoenix is also accredited. You have to check where you live. I believe you, you live in the United Arab Republic, uh, Emirates or Republic, I'm not sure. Um, in Saudi Arabia, is it? You have to find out. 
whether the Ministry of Education accepts it, uh, higher education in, at your um, university or in your area. Okay, so that's something you might want to find out. Okay, any other questions that you may have before we get started? Uh, hello, Madhukar, good to see you. Are you interested in doing, also doing your doctoral program? Okay, now why is it? It's more than, uh, it's a process, okay? Um, it doesn't matter whether you take courses or not. I think the courses at a doctoral level are not as important as the process of writing and research. The process of research, the research process, is something that, well, maybe I'll write a book about it one day, but it is so satisfying. You know, if you've done your BAs, which I'm sure most of you have, doing a BA is not that exciting. Doing an MA is a little bit more exciting, okay? But doing a PhD is the peak because uh, you learn so much about the topic, first of all, because you have to do a lot of reading, but you also learn about yourself, yourself as a learner, as a person. Um, the self-development that goes on during the doctoral research process is amazing. You really do grow. And I can say that I grew, and I miss it because I'd like to grow more. So I keep thinking maybe I'll do another PhD because it is so amazing. All right, so um, let's start. The course. Do you have any questions about the course? Just out of curiosity in case I don't have um, the answers in the presentation and I can provide it as I go. So let's start with questions and then we'll end with questions too, of course. Any questions before about the course or anything else you'd like to ask, just like Sheila asked. Okay, feel free to do so in the chat box or you can raise your hand and I can give you the mic. Sheila, I see your hand is up. Would you like to ask another question? Hello, Nelly. Good to see you. I haven't... Please feel free. I haven't seen you in a while in my classes. I think my phone is ringing, but that's okay. It's in another room. I think, Nelly, you're the only Nelly I know online that's involved in education and technology. So you came in a bit late, so uh, we're starting with questions. I was talking about my love for the doctoral dissertation process and how I grew, and um, about online programs for those who are interested in doing that. And about the course I just started, and I'm asking for questions. So do you have any questions? Hello, Menzi. Okay, so it's from before, Sheila. Okay, for some reason, okay, I'll just acknowledge that. And if you have any questions, Nelly, too, and Matt Hooker, I think you came in a bit later, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand, and I'll pass on the mic to you. Every question is perfect and is beautiful, and, and is interesting, because it's yours, okay? So um, don't be shy, and if you are shy, try it anyways. By the way, doing a dissertation really opens up uh, doors, okay? This is something that you keep hearing, but it's true. Having a PhD opens the world for you, so I highly recommend it. All right, so let's see, man, choosing an original topic which interests you is not easy. Hum, I would, I would say that the topic will come when you start asking questions. Okay, so um, you might want to ask yourself about any topic. What do I know about this topic and what would I like to know? And if you don't want to know anything, forget it. I mean, the topic has to be something that you're passionate about, okay? So, um, and there's a problem. 
there needs to be a problem and this is what people forget I help many uh, students with um, the writing and one of the main issues is deciding on a problem okay what's the problem that you want to uh, research okay there has to be a problem that's very very important and meaningful in the world so this is your chance to uh, deal with problems so there's so many problems in men choose one one problem so it's not really a topic it's a problem and you will have to prove that there is a problem and this is the hard part prove there is a problem when you know there's a problem and the difference between a solution and a problem so I'll be helping you choose the problem in this course okay a man and others so this is something that we can work out together so the layout of the course and feel free to ask questions as I go even if the question is from before it's okay and even if it's not connected that's fine too because everything is connected in the end okay the layout of the course okay here we go let me just get a pointer here pointer doesn't want to come all right so the layout of the course okay there's my video. Uh, the course will be through live online classes such as these there may be very maybe even one person okay hello Priscilla good to see you. I just finished talking about how you can grow through the doctoral process and how easy it is once you know about the template and that the most difficult thing is choosing a topic because it's not a topic it's a problem <laughs> okay Priscilla's doing well she's at the end of the process and um, easy once you know the template okay and if you think it's not easy join the course you'll make it I'll make it easy for you Priscilla all right so um, the course will be through live online classes through a ZQ and as I said it may be one person and we'll be working together on your dissertation so you'll send me what you have throughout okay from the beginning of course the first thing is choosing a problem and then coming up with a problem statement proving that there is a problem which is the hard part okay and this will be done through these classes live online classes and then content will be added to the course through his IQ and then the practice Okay, and I'll explain where these will be but you'll be practicing a lot of practice okay so you'll be writing and as I mentioned some people like to write in the morning five o'clock in the morning six and so on seven whenever their morning is some people like to work late at night I prefer after midnight that's that was my choice you may work full-time or part-time I prefer to work full-time and be as busy as I can because for me the busier I am the more I find the time I know that's crazy that's me so we all have our styles so where as I said was IQ live classes and there's an iPad how many of you have iPads I know they're expensive but if you have an iPad you can use was IQ on your iPad so just to get an idea how many in this class have iPads uh, Wiz IQ will soon have a cell phone app for every phone okay for every phone the question was if you have an iPad anyone here okay Sadie great so of course you'll be able to use your iPad for these classes it's good because um, it's faster and there's no need to worry about memory okay so you'll be using your audio video and so on and um, the apps just makes it faster than on the internet if you're using uh, say even a Mac or you're using a computer so it's faster than a computer oh you also have the van that's great all right and then with IQ and Facebook we're going to have a 
a way to interact through Facebook, hopefully through a private group. This is something that WizIQ is working on starting August. There's also, of course, Moodle, where the course is also available for those of you who are interested in working through there. And Google Docs. How many of you have heard of Google Docs? Google Docs. Google Docs Docs. Uh, just give me a smiley thumbs up. Documents. Yes, the Docs is for documents. You use it, Sadie. That's great. Okay, that's the way that I can provide and we can all provide and watch how I uh, provide feedback live online. Thank you, um, Iman, for the smiley. So Google Docs is the way that we'll be working one-on-one. -on -one. And Kata, thank you. Any questions so far? Okay, as to the what and where. Okay, if not, we're going to go on to when. So when, of course, <laughs> any time. Okay, your time, any time. But the course, that means that you don't have to go for the 12 weeks. Android, yes. Uh, Sadie, um, WizIQ will work on Androids uh, very soon. I don't know if, how soon, but I know it's, uh, it's being worked on this very minute. Sadie, so that's good news for everyone, especially in Africa and um, other underdeveloped countries where uh, they only use cell phones and SMS messages. So now they'll be able to use WizIQ also. So I'm looking forward to that. Officially, the course will be starting August 1st, 2012, but um, you can work on it, as I said, over 12 weeks according to your time. If you're in a hurry, 12 weeks, you can do your um, doctoral dissertation and uh, hopefully get it approved or your proposal if that's what you need to do right now. Um, but any time. Okay, feel free to use the chat box or raise your hand, of course. Um, I'd love to hear your voice. How? Well, it's going to be done through individual mentorship with feedback. You'll be getting one-on-one -on -one individual uh, work with me because everybody has uh, individual needs. Okay, and you may be at different levels. You may be before you start the program, um, the doctoral program at a university. You may not want to go to university right now, but do your doctoral dissertation and then this is something that we might want to talk about. Um, you know, whatever your needs happens to be, you may be at your master's and you want to work on your master's before you start your doctoral dissertation and you want me to help you with that, that's fine too. But this is one-on-one. -on -one. We'll also have uh, the group dynamics, uh, which is right here at WizIQ. There, I got my pointer. Uh, group dynamics is very important, you know, to work together. It has... It's very valuable, you'll find out. And if you're interested in why and how, you may want to do your doctoral dissertation on group dynamics, Amen. And learning and the importance of group dynamics and learning in a social environment. Okay, this is a topic, then you would have to find a problem. You may not find a problem. <laughs> okay, so I would start with a problem in general. Okay, where is there a problem? Uh, this is not something they tell us or something that I knew about when I started my course studies at the University of Phoenix, nobody talked to me about a problem. You know, get a problem, Nelly. Uh, they only talked about, what am I passionate about? Student motivation uh, is the topic, but what's the problem? You can't just say, uh, students are not motivated. You have to prove it, okay? So, Sheila, you have to prove that there is a problem. And where is there a problem? Okay, proof, proof, numbers. Okay, you need statistics, numbers. Okay, numbers, numbers indicate a problem. And who's saying there is a problem? Don't forget, when you do a doctoral dissertation, you're nobody. Nobody cares what you have to say, as Priscilla will, <laughs> will tell us. Priscilla, if you'd like to, uh, you know, drop in at any time, just uh, continue what I'm saying uh, to confirm, okay? Okay. Um, 
If you're just a student, you're nobody until you have your PhD. Nobody will listen to you. So the numbers have to come from uh, valid resources, and preferably they have to be uh, doctors, okay, or organizations that uh, are valid and so that their numbers can be accepted. You can't accept a private organization. You know, if uh, someone wants to say that the numbers are this and that, okay? So the numbers have to be validated. Okay, and um, practice makes perfect, of course. The more you write, the more uh, progressive you'll get. In other words, you need to write and write and write. And, and forget about whether it's good or not, because the minute you start writing, it'll get better. So if you have to force yourself, yes, force yourself. And this is what the mentorship is about. I will force you. In other words, I will push you and push you. And um, I'm pretty good at that. Okay, I'm pretty good at encouraging uh, people to, uh, to do what's good for them. Okay. And if it's good for you, I will be there to push. I wasn't pushed by my mentor. My mentor left me. <laughs> the only thing that pushed me was money. I knew that if I didn't finish, I would have to pay Priscilla. So I didn't want to pay, so I pushed myself. But it's hard. Yes, as Priscilla says, Priscilla, if you want the mic, just let me know because I love your voice. There will be a tremendous amount of writing, but the writing does help to clarify what you're trying to say. Exactly. That's the point. The minute you write it, the minute it's there in front of you, the minute you do it, um, magic just happens. So there's a lot of good in writing. Okay, don't think. Thinking is not a good thing. <laughs> writing. Think as you write. So um, reflective writing is always good. And thinking through the writing seems to work best. And Kata says, to write, I need to know very well grammar. That's a problem. Well, that's what I'm here for, to help you with grammar as well. So um, <laughs> you learn through making mistakes. So you'll make mistakes, but it's not only grammar. It's, well, it's using certain acceptable. That's right. Um, yes, you can use proofreading services. Um, that's up to you, of course. It costs a lot of money, but if you can afford it, that's fine. I didn't use a proof uh, reading service. I used my own self. And um, I saved money. But then you have to know how to write. And uh, one of the ways to write, to learn to write, of course, is to read. And I think Kata will um, uh, say that that's how he learned English. Okay, so reading is very, very important because you'll be reading doctoral dissertations and reviewing them. The more you read, it doesn't mean that every doctoral dissertation is good, because many are not. But um, through reading, you'll become better and better. Can you like a foreign, can you use like a foreign language in it, like Spanish and French? Or um, Well, you have to translate what you write in other languages, but you can use that for your, uh, yes, uh, we will be following APA, so if you go to the APA um, website, you'll get information on using other languages for your citations. You can use, it has to be translated though, but you need to reference the correct um, source, okay? And yes, it is possible. It just has to be done in a specific way, Sadie. Uh, Sadie, would, uh, do you intend to do your um, dissertation in English or in another language? Okay, that's something important. I see that others have joined. Uh, feel free to ask questions, even if you came in late. Uh, son, I'm not sure. Please, okay, just, um, it doesn't matter. It's fine. I'm very flexible, by the way. Um, in these online classes, in my teaching, and in general. Oh, okay, that's fine, Sadie. You could cite in other languages. Yes, definitely. Okay, the price is $252. This includes uh, PayPal uh, percentage, which is about 5%. So it's, you can pay through uh, PayPal, 
MoneyGrams or Western Union. The problem with MoneyGrams and Western Union is that it's cash. Uh, PayPal, you can also divide it uh, into whatever you want. If you want to divide it for a year, that's fine. You can also divide it, you know, as, as you wish through uh, PayPal. So, are there any questions so far before we end the session? Are there any questions? Okay, I see Sun uh, has a hand up over there, so let me pass on the mic. I'm not sure whether to give you webcam, so... Um, are you using a tablet? Are you using a tablet? And I tried to uh, mute my mic so we could hear you. I understand that you're using a tablet, which is great. There are some issues uh, right now with the tablets, I think. I'm not sure um, if you're able to use your um, audio, your mic. Your audio, yes, definitely, because otherwise you wouldn't be hearing this. But I'm not sure about your mic. I did hear a lot of noise. Um, oh, you just joined. Okay, so if you have a question... Um, I don't know if you can see the chat box from the beginning, but you can copy uh, the chat box at the end. And I can go over things. That's not a problem. Priscilla, I see you've got your hand up, so let me pass on the mic to you. Hi, Priscilla. I don't hear you. Um, maybe it's my connection. Can you hear me? No, I don't know if you can hear me right now. Oh, you can. All right. <laughs> I thought it was maybe my connection. Um, I don't know why we don't hear you. Normally we do. So uh, maybe you need to refresh the page. Maybe that would help. And Sun, I can try to um, try again. You don't have to raise your hand again, Priscilla. I think the mic is open. So it's not about raising your hand right now. Sun, uh, let me try to give you the mic again and mute my mic so we don't get echoed. It says you should use... Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. It says that you should use a headset. <laughs> Are you using you should use a headset? Are you using No, I'm not using a headset. I'm using the iPad microphone. Can you hear me? Great. Actually, I, I did not know. I was on the LinkedIn when I read this this IQ and I downloaded this app and I got in uh, this discussion with you. I assume this is something about reading. Son... Um, well, I guess it's working on your tablet, which is fine, but we can't speak at the same time unless you have a headset, which is why I also have a headset, even though I don't need it on my Mac usually. But uh, for these classes, if we want to speak at the same time, uh, we all need to have headsets. So you mentioned something about reading. Well, yes, there's a lot of reading involved. Uh, if you want to write correctly. When I say write correctly, that means write uh, in academic style. Okay, academia requires you to write a certain way. And for example, I mentioned this uh, the other day, you can't use or use very little passives. 
So the idea is no passives. Okay, that's one thing, no passives. Another is no personal pronouns. Okay, I think um, perhaps Priscilla, Priscilla, are you able to uh, use your mic? Perhaps you can also share uh, other language forms that we cannot use in the dissertation. Uh, I can say that another example, oh, Priscilla went, I guess, to uh, maybe refresh her page. Another thing that you cannot use is you cannot use um, certain forms with your verbs, like subjects. For example, the subject predicate association has to be very, very clearly the subject doing the action. So, for example, you cannot say book tells because a book does not tell us anything. It might in, you might find information in a book, and the information indicates. You cannot say that information talks. Information does not talk. Books did not talk, and so on. So the subject has to uh, clearly state the action that it does, and it has to be able to do that. Okay, so these are really annoying things sometimes that... Um, doctoral students have problems with when they write their dissertation. So there are a list of things that I'll be sharing with you on how to write because it's different, it's a different kind of writing. Okay, academic writing is definitely different. Okay, let's see if Priscilla's back and uh, she's able to, okay Priscilla, I see you can just um, unmute your mic and make, oh I think we can hear you. I think so, but I'm not sure. I heard something. I just heard music, a note. You need your headset, otherwise I'll need to mute my mic. So I think you're, it may, be, is it a slow connection, Priscilla? You see, once the apps is out, I know apps, I know iPads are expensive, but um, once you, if you have an iPad, and once this is available on cell phones, the WizIQ apps, it'll be so much easier to communicate. But again, you need a headset, okay, for uh, clarity, and so that more people can speak at the same time. So Priscilla, I guess... Um, you're typing something, so let's wait. I don't know the problem. I had a different, I had different things going on with other applications. I'll restart. Oh, you. I don't know if you have to restart your computer. Um, generally, it's just refreshing your page. But if you wish, all right, maybe that'll work. Okay, we'll wait for you. All right, so um, I'm going to keep uh, Priscilla's microphone open when she comes back. All right, any, anyone else would like the mic so that you can ask uh, your question? I see a man says, to know the redundant expressions in writing is not easy. Oh, it becomes very easy. Once you have a list of what not to do and what words to use, and you will get that, Amen. You'll get a list of um, words that you can use, list of expressions that are very commonly used in sentences for academic writing, so it won't be a problem because you get used to it. Um, and that's why I said practice makes perfect because the more you write and try these out, it'll become automatic. And then you won't remember why it was hard in the first place. Uh, where can I get the, there, where can I get? You mean to the expressions? Oh, where can you get that? Well, when you join the course, of course. <laughs> Okay, when you join the course, you'll get the list of everything. As I said at the, I guess in a previous slide, when I talked about uh, the layout, okay, in the content. The content will be there for those who join the course. Okay, so there'll be um, a great deal in the content. Okay, I'll be uploading uh, PowerPoint slides I'll be uploading uh, Word documents and other documents with that information. Where can you join the course? Uh, the course is actually um, 
let me just get the link for you. I wanted to show you the course uh, through what you would see, but I can only show it to you through uh, my eyes as the facilitator of the course. But I let me take you through the course just to make it a bit clearer. Okay, here's the link to the course. Okay, let me um, screen share. And when can you join? The minute you join, you can start. Okay, you can join right now. Let me screen share. I hope the screen sharing feature is working. Uh, by the way, <laughs> when screen sharing starts, sometimes um, where's the IQ goes to the bottom. In other words, your chat box and everything uh, that you see on the right right now will appear. It may appear on the bottom left-hand corner, and you may need to pop it out. Okay, so... Um, if that happens, please let me know in the chat box. Okay, so right now I'm going to take you. Uh, can I take Sheila with me? Sheila, can I take with you, just give you voice so you can be uh, my eyes because I won't be able to see the chat box. Sheila, are you there with me? Um, I'm in a I have a blank screen. Okay, all right. So tell me when you start. Blank screen. All right, so let me know when you start seeing the class. It may take a few seconds. Okay, let me... Black screen with an arrow. Oh, with an arrow. Hmm. Let me know when the black screen disappears yeah. and you see a, about the course. And everyone else, if you can add to the chat box whether you see the screen or not. I'm using a Mac and I'm on Safari. Um, I hear it's better with Firefox and with Chrome. But I, I got angry at Chrome this morning because um, it did some funny things on my screen. So, Sheila, can you see it now? Or is it still black? No, I just got a black, uh, black screen. Okay, so let me uh, return since um, it's not appearing. All right, did, let me just uh, stop sharing. Uh, what about the rest of you? Were you able to, uh, if, if your chat is on the bottom left hand, just pop it out, click on the arrow, which will pop everything back up. I think, Sheila, that's what you saw. You saw, okay, so everybody saw the black screen. All right, so let me just um, take this to Chrome. Okay, let me just go over to Chrome. I'm just going to um, be right back. I'll just turn this class off and uh, because I can't have two classes. And I'm going to go over to Chrome. Okay, so let me just add this to Chrome. Okay, and see what happens if I can get the class or if I need something else. See what happens as I go through Chrome. Okay, so uh, I'm on Chrome now. Uh, let me see if, uh, if this works. Okay, Sheila, you can unmute your mic. And I'm going to try it on Chrome. They said that Chrome is perfect. So let's see what happens. Let's see if I can do this on Chrome and we don't get the black screen. The black screen is from my end. It's because Safari it doesn't always like Flash. Okay, for some reason and I just upgraded my Safari. Maybe it's not compatible. Okay, this should be working yeah. in a second. Right now, you probably don't see anything. Thank you, Kata, for letting me know that you also had a black screen there. All right, Priscilla, you're back. Okay. Great. I hear your Does voice. Work now? Can you hear yes, it's a bit loud. If you can maybe lower the volume a bit. Okay. But your voice no. is still loud. On your end, you have to go into the settings and just uh, kind of lower um, your end. Okay. Much better. <laughs> okay, because I'm not sharing. Um, are you using a Mac, Sheila? No, it's um, just a PC and um, Internet Explorer. Okay, so let me um, let me just now it's coming up. 
It should be coming up now. Yeah, now I've got Google. Uh, okay, now you've got everything. Web stores and okay, all right. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go to the course from here. All right. Okie doke. All right, so this is the course. Priscilla, I guess you can see it. Too. Both of you can see it, am I correct? I can see it. All right, okay. All right, so this is the course the way I see it, but you'll see it the same way. Okay, the link, as I said, is this. I'll put it back in the uh, chat box again. This is the perspective of a teacher of a course on WizIQ, uh, but you will have the same information. You'll be able to see classes, not add classes, but this will be just classes. Uh, there'll be, if there'll be tests, tests, and then the content. You'll just see the word content. And under content, you'll have a list of things. Okay, right now, there are two classes on reading strategies that I think Sun mentioned. And is plagiarism, this, these were two classes that took place. Oh, one class is going to take place, actually. And this class took place already. Uh, this is a class today. And uh, here, uh, this is content. This will be under your content. It's... Um, about plagiarism. It's a PowerPoint presentation. And then this is the chapter template that I will share with you in a minute. And this is the doctoral dissertation. Okay, the PowerPoint that's on uh, the screen, the whiteboard right now. This is the template. Uh, let me just get it for you. Okay, it's the template that's also on WizIQ. It's for public viewing. So you can see it, of course, it's upside down right now because it's a PDF. And uh, PDFs have to be turned right side up. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and you can download it, of course, by clicking on download. It's public. And then it'll go straight. If you have a WizIQ account, and then it'll go into your email. Okay, so uh, the template is available in the classroom right now. It's public. And let me take you uh, back to class. I'll stop sharing. And uh, here's the link to the course. Okay, so there's the course. And uh, let me just share the uh, template with you in its PDF form and right side up. All right, so can you all see this? Okay, just let me know in the chat. And Priscilla, you've got the microphone. We'll get to you in a minute. I'll just go through the template. Okay, everybody else? Okay, great. Oh, you can't see it, Boven? Boven, where are you? Because it's a Google template, and I'm not sure. Well, it's PDF right now. But Boven, can you not see the, the white screen? No, that's interesting. Okay, let's see what's going on with that. Sadie, are you also having problems? Uh, it could be that everything's because I screen share. Remember I said everything might be at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So there's a, an arrow that you need to pop up. Okay, so maybe that's what's happening on your end, Bhavan. So if you can just find, you can see it now. All right. Okay, perfect. Is everybody else okay, too? All right. That's what happens with screen sharing. All right. So this is um, the template um, for the dissertation. It's a five-chapter template. And uh, if you wish to get the template, you can get it. It's on uh, Google. And um, let me get it for you. Does anyone have it already, perhaps? It's public, but I'm not sure whether you got it. I put it on Facebook for public viewing, and I think maybe in other places too. But uh, let me get it for you. There's the link to the, um, the chapter. It's, a, it's not PDF there, and uh, you'll be able to add your comments, I believe. If not, let me know. Okay, so it's the same thing if you click on the Google Docs. Unless you're in China, I think that uh, Google doesn't work in China. So that's why I put up the PDF because I thought if it's in PDF, um, but I'll make it, I made it available PDF 
for those in China and other countries that do not get uh, Google. Okay, I don't think there's anyone here with that problem. So chapter one, of course, is the introduction. And these are the headings. Okay, chapter two uh, depends on you. It's the literature review. And of course, you can have other, you will have other headings depending on your topic. Okay, but these are basic historical overview, current findings, gaps in literature, and conclusions. Chapter three is research methods. And these are uh, the headings. Okay, I just added to the time. And then, of course, every chapter has an introduction. But, except for the first one, the background is the introduction. You don't write the word introduction, but you introduce the chapter. Okay, it's not a heading, you just introduce the chapter. And we'll talk about this as we talk about APA style. Okay, or those of you who are doing MLA, we may need to talk about MLA, okay, if you're not using APA. So chapter three, uh, research design, it's research methods, what methods you used, um, appropriateness of the design that you used, research question or questions, depending on whether you did a qualitative or quantitative uh, study, or you're going to do population, informed consent. This is a very important part of your research. Uh, process, consent, and how you get. Priscilla, I'm wondering whether you're not having problems with the University of Phoenix in the way you got uh, your recruits, the way you recruited your participants. This is a huge issue if it's done online, if it's done before the proposal or after the proposal. You're supposed to get everything set before you start writing or doing your research. Okay, everything has to be done in the proposal. So this is also something we need to talk about, the proposal process. Okay, so um, how you get your subjects is very, very important. And how you go about informing them that they may leave at any time and so on. Okay, chapter four, of course, presentation analysis of your data. And the final chapter, chapter five, is conclusions and recommendations. Some universities ask for more than five chapters, which is fine. But the same information is there. So, uh, getting back to um, the course. Priscilla, I'd like you to add some of the things that um, I mentioned, like writing style. Okay, mm -hmm. How is the academic writing for a doctoral dissertation mm -hmm. different? Okay. Are you able to hear me now? Just to make sure before I... Because I was talking all along. <laughs> Oh, you were? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very well, yeah. Priscilla. We can hear you really well. Okay. Well, what I was saying before was Sorry. this is a great opportunity for anyone who is interested in pursuing that journey of either a master's or, in our case, in my case, a doctoral. I This would have been very good for me uh, had I started and understood but I'm actually repeating a course because I didn't get it right the first time. And this is a small stipend, what Dr. Nell is actually asking, because I'm paying thousands of dollars to repeat the course. But I did submit my chapters today. Today is the beginning of a new eight-week period for me. So hopefully it will be nothing but green flags all along the way. But yes, the template is really great. But having the template, as I did, and not really understanding what I was supposed to do with it um, was a bit of a problem for me. So having someone, it seems like, to work one-on-one, -on -one, even though we have one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't seem that they were as avail available as it appears that Dr. Nell is saying. She is going to be um, for us or you if you decide to go this path. The writing is quite different. I consider myself to be a writer, but it's a different type of writer. It's more, um, I wish I had thought of saying something like this, but it's someone else's <laughs> thoughts, someone else who is a true researcher, that they have said things. And I was saying that I even now researched and used information from Dr. Nelly's study in Cute. my study and hope Someday someone will say something that I said, but at this point, mine doesn't, what I have to say is not that important, but I had to research and find people that had said something that was valid and reproducible 
and could and is documented it's not what I thought some of the things that I see that people have written it is what I thought but I didn't do any research to prove it so we go through this process and it sounds like what Dr. Nelly has is that if you submit to her she will look at what you have and give you feedback you still will have to do the work and it's through the process of doing the work that you really understand what it is that you're supposed to be doing and appreciate your very own work but if someone is there to hold your hand to be a a guide um, I think that that will be the most instrumental part and the most challenging part is it's not the first I don't know two years of class because we have teamwork but when you're doing the individual work and as I as she's saying you really could do your dissertate you could do your chapters before you even do the coursework I just think that the coursework is a part of the process especially if you're young or you haven't gone through a lot of uh, writing and reading this type of information so I want to applaud Dr. Nelly for offering this to us as students and as you proceed I think that you will learn a lot as I have already done from reading Dr. Nelly's dissertation along with others but it gives you a different appreciation for, for what people are doing have done and what you will be able to contribute so that's all unless there was a specific question uh, it is a different type of writing but I think Kata was interested in grammar I would even say at this point Kata that don't the gram the grammar is extremely important but more important than the grammar is getting something written the grammar will fall in place and there are lots of tools and resources and people that can help frame or shape your thinking but if your thought is not out there there isn't very much anyone can do whether the grammar is intact or not and a lot of places my grammar was intact but what I was saying really wasn't making sense in terms of okay this is not a doctoral or this is not scholarly writing this is not an essay but it seemed like a good essay to me but that's not what they want it is truly a different type of writing and it's only when you start to read others that you get that appreciation for what they are doing thank you I will mute thank you very much Priscilla uh, Priscilla has gone through a process just like I and um, you know what I had a mentor as I mentioned I don't know whether you were here Priscilla I had a mentor and I had a committee <laughs> and no one was there to help me it was very very lonely when I finished the course the coursework the coursework was great I was having a great time socializing and and getting feedback and working in teams it, I loved it I loved the coursework but when it ended and I was on my own and my mentor was not there he was getting paid <laughs> but he wasn't there you know he just said Nelly do it well I did it and the stages were very very difficult very very difficult and I made a lot of mistakes and I didn't want to pay that Priscilla is right it's costing a lot of money I didn't want to pay just to go to a class and and sit there to submit you pay to submit <laughs> now that's a waste of money so I had to go out there and learn on my own and it was very hard which is why I decided to create this course it's worth the money it's really worth the money and I'm, I'm not saying this because you're gonna be paying me I'm saying this because I've got the answers I went through this and I learned a lot because I had to do it on my own but it cost me money and I wanna save the money for you and, and the hardship and you know what it hurts it really hurts I was hurt I was a good writer I was told by professors that my writing was academic that it was great and it was I guess but it wasn't good enough for the doctoral process it's a different kind of writing and Kata the grammar is completely different it's a different kind of grammar and there are books APA books on how to write um, you know as far as the grammar how to cite as far as the grammar but not how to write and I became an academic writer in other words I can write today better than most professors can 
because I learned the hard way. It's it's very sto you know staccato kind of writing. It's very dry, very very dry. No flowers. It's not creative. And if you like to be creative, forget it. There's another kind of creativity, and that's your skills as a thinker. You have to be very logical about every sentence, and it has to fit in the template. That's what I learned. Fit in the template, Priscilla. Uh, Jeremy, as I said, is a close friend of mine. He's the one that signs it. But to tell you the truth, he just goes by the template. If the template is there and the writing looks the way it should, he doesn't bother to read the whole thing. Nobody reads the whole thing. That's the problem. <laughs> they don't read it. They just go by the way it looks. Okay? So, um, there are a lot of tricks. A lot of tricks. And I will provide you with those tricks. <laughs> That's right. You're right, Priscilla. Nobody reads the whole thing. Only you do. Or someone like me who's going to read it. Or an editor. But you have to pay for your editor, and it costs a lot of money. <coughs> okay, and you know what? Some, excuse me, I've lost my voice. Some editors don't know how to edit either. <coughs> you know, you have to make sure that you take an editor who knows how to write a dissertation. And many of them do not. And they take money and you lose. You'll find that many editors uh, say that they will edit your work. But after you pay a lot of money to the editors, and I've heard this, and I know it's happened to many doctoral students who pay a lot of money and then their papers, their doctoral dissertation, is not approved. Imagine, thousands of dollars, and your doctoral dissertation is not approved. So this is your chance. Um, take it and save a lot of money. A lot of work for me, though. Okay, it's a lot of work. But together, we can do it. Yes, it's not fair, Kata. And I'm trying to be fair, so uh, this is your chance. Enjoy. Enjoy the process wherever you do it, whether you take this course or not. It'll help you grow as a person. And I think that's worth the price. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great week. And uh, if I can help, let me know. It's changing lives. Yes, it does. It'll open doors. And your life will change. Definitely, wherever you are, in whatever country, that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Bye for now. This is being recorded. You may copy the chat if you like now. I'm also recording this through Camtasia, so it'll appear on YouTube. Anytime, Sheila. Bye for now.